What's going on, everybody? Terrell Friday here with Future DDS. And on this installment of the DSC series, we have Ms. Kayla Morris from East Carolina University School of Dental Medicine joining us. Kayla, thanks for taking some time out and joining us. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. Yeah, I know it's a lot going on with the COVID going on and everything, but you know, thanks for taking some, carving some time out uh, away from family and everything to speak with us. So if you could, yeah, yeah, no problem. If you could, you know, just, uh, you know, reintroduce yourself to everybody, all the viewers out there, uh, tell everybody where you're from originally, where you went to undergrad, uh, what you majored in, and then what you did if you took a gap year. Okay. Hey, everyone. My name is Kayla Morris. I'm a D1 at East Carolina School of Dental Medicine. I'm originally from Richmond, Virginia, but I moved to Charlotte, North Carolina, my junior year of high school. So I got in state tuition and I ended up staying in North Carolina. I went to University of North Carolina at Charlotte. It was great. Um, I majored in chemistry and Japanese. And originally I wanted to just be a translator and just move to Japan, but I ended up getting tired of that. So I also realized I like dentistry. I have a lot of work done on my teeth. So I was always in and out of dental offices and that's just kind of how I got onto the dental route. And yeah, and then I just took a year off after school because I was just kind of burnt out from majoring in chemistry and Japanese the entire time. So I just needed that year. So anybody thinking about taking a year off, definitely do it. Even if people tell you, you might not go back to school. If you're truly serious about it, you'll go back because I definitely did. After taking that year off, I was tired of working for somebody. So yeah, same. <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So you know, this is the burning question all the pretense have. I'm sure you had when you were uh, trying to trying to get into dental school as well, is how do you prepare for the DAT or how, what was your number one tip for uh, how you prepare for the DAT? Honestly, taking the practice tests, like several of them and taking them serious, like it was the real one helped so much because my scores pretty much reflected what I got on the practice exam. So okay. if you take out time, I did maybe like a whole week of just practice tests. Every night after I got from work, because I worked at 8 to 5, and I worked at a restaurant, I was literally trying to make some money, okay? Yeah. So <laughs> I would get off, go to the university, take them exams for however long it took, four or five hours, tired, as I don't know what. But it worked out. I did well on the exam. So that's my main tip, practice all those practice exams. It helped. Got you. So you just, like, found practice exams online? After I used DAT boot camp, you know, they have the, like, exams at the end. I would do those. So uh -huh. I did the... I tried to study as much as I could. I took the DAT so late, so like, I was just praying. Yeah. But <laughs> I took a lot of the practice exams, and I saw my scores. I was like, all right, I'm good. So oh. I think just taking those helps you see what it's really gonna be like and see where you're at. Got you, got you. Okay, so, you know, specifically for ECU, mm -hmm. um, do you guys have any type of pre-dental enrichment programs or any type of feeder programs for prospective students that are looking at ECU? Yes. So minorities specifically, we have SNDA, which offers Impressions Day. So they bring a lot of students in, pour up some impressions, and get to know what it's like to be a dental student for a day. And then the school in general has like a, a summer program. I don't really know much about it because I didn't do it, but I know they have like a pre-dental summer program that a lot of my classmates end up doing. And they say it helps you see what it's like to be a dental student for the summer. And you get to meet the professors and stuff, which also helps you kind of with your interview and stuff. So. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, okay. So, so you guys do have a few few options. Yeah, a few options. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So, uh, you know, when you were when you were deciding what schools you wanted to go to, how many schools did you end up narrowing it down to when you when you were uh, choosing your applications? Yeah. So I think originally I was gonna apply to ten, and like I said, I kept pushing my DT back, <laughs> so I was running out of time. So I ended up applying to like I think five or okay. six. And I got into my top two, but my number one, which is actually not the school I'm at, was just way too expensive. So I know a lot of people, that's always the biggest factor of money. I mean, you can go where your heart is, or you can go, or you just you figure out the money thing later, or you save money, so it's just up to the person. But I only applied to, I think, five. Yeah. Okay, got you. So it ended up working out anyway, but yeah. <laughs> you know, of yeah. course, even though you didn't reach that, that 10 that you wanted. But uh, so how was the actual interview at ECU? You know, it is somehow, I guess, what your decision. So. Yeah, it was very intense. Like, they asked so many questions, and there were so many professors you have to meet with and talk with. And you meet the dean, and she asks you a bunch of questions, especially, like, in North Carolina. They really want North Carolina dentists, and they want to make sure you accept Medicaid, which is a big thing in North Carolina, since there aren't a lot of North Carolina dentists in, like, underdeserved areas. So they just want to make sure you fit the statement and the purpose of the school. But, yeah, it was very intense compared to my other interviews. 
So. Gotcha, gotcha. Can you do well? Cause you know, kind of through the day, you know, showing up, um, mm -hmm. you know, how is the interview, I guess the schedule of the day, how's that set up for you? Yeah. So dang, it feels so long ago. Those <laughs> coaches wipe your mind. I'm like, what, what happened? So if I remember, I think it was like from 8 a.m. 8 to 1 p.m. So like, from 8 to 12, we did interviews back to back to back to back. And it was only six of us, which is completely different from all my other interviews, whereas most schools have like a lot more students. Um, and you met with like the dean first, and then you had an interview with the D4, and you had interviews with three other professors. Yeah. So two dentists, like one was, mine was an endo, I mean, an endodontist, and then the other one was maybe an orthodontist, and then we had like just a professor. And then after that, we had lunch, and I think that was it. So, okay. yeah, so it was straightforward. They asked you all the questions they need, on to the next professor, and then lunch and you're done. So, yeah. Got you, got you. So once you actually, you know, got the acceptance, realized you were going to stay close to home and in uh, North Carolina and everything, how was it actually transitioning into your first year, you know? How was it, you know, how the class is set up? How was it, yeah, yeah. kind of through that? Um, the hardest thing for me is, unfortunately, like other dental schools, ECU literally requires you to go to class every day. So class eight to five in the same room, no windows, the professor changes out, but we sit there all day long. That was a huge change. Whereas an undergrad, you have to go to class every day, you go you want. I went to class every day, but it was breaks and it wasn't as long. Sitting in a class from eight to five is hard. Yeah. And then we have exams every Wednesday. So your weekend is pretty much gone because you got to study over the weekend. And then we still have all of our, uh, what do we call it? All of our like preclinical stuff. So we have like all those kind of exams and okay. it's, it was just a huge change from studying barely in undergrad <laughs> and making your way through and having all this extra work to make up your grade. Whereas now it's like you the fastest test or you don't and you got to retake uh, it. So yeah, definitely a lot different. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so how is the curriculum set up there? Is it uh, PBL style? Is it block style? Or, you know, or is I, it? I don't know what any of those are. What do you, What are those? Okay, so uh, basically, blocks is they usually have it um, major, pretty much major classes like anatomy, biochem, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, histology. Um, I see what you mean. Up. And then integrated style is just they'll talk about cardiac. You know, just go over the the mm -hmm. cardiac system, or they'll do pulmonary. Only go over pulmonary system. Like is that the second oh, option? That's okay. what we do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So integrated yeah. style. And you guys start getting into preclin first year, like first semester? Yes. So we do, I don't know if a lot of schools still do this. Um, what is it called? Dang, wax up. So we like yeah. use the wax to make teeth and stuff. So like that's the very first thing we do in clinic. And then after that, like now in my second semester, we're using hand drills and like drilling teeth, learning how to do class ones and stuff like that. And then next semester, if we even go back, I guess we're going to start <laughs> we're doing that, right? endo. Yeah, I think endo is the next thing we do. And then after that, it keeps going. So, yeah. Gotcha. And are you guys able to get into clinic at all to assist first year or? Um, I don't think so, unless you're a dental hygienist. Okay. Yeah. Got you, got so, you. We just work on each other or our little fake models. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> got you. Okay, awesome. So last few questions here as we, as we start to wrap up. Um, what is something that you feel like is has been unique to your experience at ECU? You know, granted, you only have your one experience, but what is something you feel like has, has kind of made your experience there? Um, one thing that I didn't even realize, like when I was looking at schools was ECU has probably one of the smallest class size. Like I remember one of my interviews had, they said we would have like a three or 400 class size. That is huge. Oh, yeah. Whereas at ECU, we have 50 students. So, and there's like a professor for every like five or six students. So we get so much in depth, like for feedback and contact. So I think that definitely made a huge impact because if I went to a school where it was a lot more students and it didn't, we didn't get that kind of connection, I don't know how well I would be doing. So I think that definitely helps out a lot. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, and the last question as, as we close here is, uh, if you can go back, um, back to the time where you were still applying to school, still hungry to get in, get the application or get the acceptance, um if you can give that version of you any advice what would that advice be um it gets worse before it gets better because i went to school thinking undergrad was so hard and then, uh, boy was i wrong <laughs> and then like even in dental school i just be thinking sometimes like can i do this like am i really supposed to be doing this because i could literally be working a little eight to five like everybody else so I just have to remember sometimes like my end goal, what I'm trying to do, it'll all work out and then not everybody can do this. So if we're meant to do this, just keep going. Like it'll work out in the end. So. 
Very true. Very true. Well, thank you so much. You know, on behalf of all the pre out there, all the viewers out there, Tyler, myself, and Future DDS, I just want to say uh, thank you for taking some time out and uh, speaking with them. Thank you. Thank you for reaching out to me. This is such a great opportunity, honestly. Definitely, definitely. If so, if any uh, pre out there uh, have any questions for you, you know, about ECU or about your journey, getting into dental school or just need any advice, uh, I guess what's the best way to get in touch with you? Uh, my Instagram, it's, don't laugh at my name, it's look I made you smile. Okay. It made you smile, see? <laughs> there we go. Okay. Look, you I can always you. reach out to me there. I'm definitely here to help. Got you, got you. We'll make sure we put that down in the description box so anybody who has any questions for you can reach out for sure. But um, again, thank you guys for watching. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the like button and the notification bell so you know whenever we post up new content. But that's going to wrap it up for today's interview. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. All right, Thank now. Thank you. <laughs>